another perfect summer morning in London and quite possibly another ramble. What are we going to talk about today? Let's see what comes up out of my head. How about this? What happens when you start a YouTube channel? First thing is you learn a lot of new skills. Like filming for one thing. Filming's not the most complicated thing in the world. You can make it complicated, of course, like everything, but it doesn't have to be. It's just a pretty basic camera, maybe even a phone, anything to get started. And just, you know, you can build on that once you've got off the ground. So filming is one thing, and that's one of the constantly evolving and improving sides of things. That's ongoing. People talk about filters and angles and light and yeah, it's vast, but don't let that put you off. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be complicated. Editing. Woo. Now that, if you've never done that before, that is a learning curve. That's a fun one and a steep one. And you definitely do some learning doing that one. Talking and walking and watching the road, staying alive. <laughs> it's a bonus feature in this case. Yeah, editing is a, whew, that's a fun one. I mean, it is exciting, you know, you get to do all these effects and learn transitions and, you know, get the sound right and add music and whatever, it's great fun. But you quickly learn, like I have, that it is time consuming and probably one of the most time consuming parts of the process. You gotta go through it, no shortcuts. Like I said on the other video, I'm considering getting an editor uh, just to try it out to start with. I've been thinking about it, I uh, fired off an email just to get the ball rolling and give it some thought. Obviously it's going to cost me money in doing that, something I'm not thrilled about at this stage so early on, but I'm curious as to whether the results will be worth it. Will they be much better than I'm currently doing? If they are streets ahead, then maybe it might be worth it, um, you know, if the results pay off. But if it's just kind of the same as I'm doing, just by somebody else doing it, and there's no real big improvement, then maybe I won't. We'll see, see how that goes. Talking in general, it's one of those things that's a bit of a strange one for me. You may not believe this, but it doesn't feel like that's my natural area, <laughs> talking. Given half a chance, I'd probably avoid it and just do instead. I'm more of a doer than a talker. But under the right circumstances, I can talk. And by that, I mean having good listeners, that's crucial. And here, everybody's listening, maybe. As long as you're watching it, you're listening to it. And you're not interrupting or, you know, disrupting my flow. I can do that myself. <laughs> but talking is a bit of a skill in some ways, I think. And you can get better at it. And you will get better at it over time. Everything improves over time, doesn't it? The more you practice it. That's the basics of it. Practice, get better in anything and everything. Talking to camera, talking to people, talking to you, talking to individuals. These are all plus points for YouTube. Still in the learning category, whatever your niche is and whatever you're doing, research. You get to research your subject. And research, is it vital? Yeah, it can be. It's definitely worth doing, depending on what your, what your niche is, as I said. My niche, as you know on this channel, is all about SCSI London and different areas of London, different parts of London and other explorations. But that means I have to do a bit of research on it. The things I've learned in doing that in the last few months, it's fantastic. I never knew what arms houses were. I didn't know the history of Spurs Stadium, you know, that sort of thing. It's brilliant. You get to learn stuff. Research. And in my case, along with research is history. I get to know the history of some things and find out a bit of backstory and, and what have you. Um, yeah, it may not be yours, but for me it has been. I've learned about the history of the areas and places that I, that I visit and, uh, you know, a lot about how they were formed, maybe things that have happened in the past, that sort of thing. I've never been much of a historian buff, but maybe I'll come to realise that I like it more than I thought. History. Stick that on the learning list. The next thing is confidence. You definitely get more confident. Your confidence grows. You get more comfortable. You know, you do your first few videos and they're like, 
you feel incredibly awkward, and you still do for a while, well, at least I do. Um, but the more you do it, the more confident you get with it, and the less you worry about what others think. And, you know, you get better and better at it, and you can, you can talk like this, and maybe it starts to flow easier, and you care less about what others think around you. So on the whole, I'd say it's a good boost for your confidence in general, to see results, to see people watching what you do, and in some cases, appreciating it. And along with confidence, you develop a slightly thicker skin. You kind of have to. I mean, some of that comes with age anyway. You know, as you get older, you start to care less about what others think, really. <laughs> Doesn't matter as much. Getting a thicker skin sort of comes as part and parcel of it. So then, you know, naturally you're gonna get the occasional d less than complimentary comment, let's say, <laughs> and you're gonna have to deal with it. So, you know, hopefully you'll get so many comments in future that these things will be part and parcel of it. You'll have good comments and you'll probably have bad comments from what they call the haters. And, you know, you just gotta, gotta kind of learn to Expect that, and also how you're gonna handle it when it does crop up. I used to be somebody who classically took the bait years ago on stuff like that. But as I said, mellowing out as you get a bit older, um, you realize that all you're doing by taking the bait is engaging yourself in negativity that you could do without, drains you, drags you down a bit, and basically saps your energy, which is not what you want. So, as they say, Lots of good phrases out there. They say, let the haters hate. And yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna walk right down the middle of the street. This is such, such a perfect morning. Check this out. Yeah, it's just the street, but what a day. Got my shorts on, got my running gear ready for later. Gonna run home. It is awesome to be out, it really is. What's next? Well. Being a YouTuber, <laughs> it inspires creativity. Kind of pushes it, you know? It pu you have to push yourself into places that you might not normally go. Basically, pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. Of course, I'm doing that right now. I'm right out of my comfort zone, but it's getting a bit more comfortable. And when it gets too comfortable, I'll push myself further out of it. That's the way to do it. That's how you learn, that's how you grow. So it inspires creativity. You kind of feel like you, you want to keep coming up with things. Maybe you already have a hundred or so ideas like I do. I've got hundreds of them. Not so much on this side of it, but they're all there. And it kind of, it keeps you motivated to keep looking for ideas and keep being creative. Nothing wrong with that. Exercising the brain, keeping things exciting. Starlings everywhere. Doing the rounds, pecking around. It gives you the freedom to come up with ideas that you might not normally get. You can conjure ideas up out of your head, you know, if they're, or if they're sitting dormant for a long time in the back of your head, you can bring them forward and you can talk about them, make a video about them, do something with it. Uh, why not? You know, I'm sure all of us have got these these thoughts and these ideas in the back of our heads that you've often thought this or that and, you know, well, being a YouTuber gives you the opportunity to do that, to just let it all out if you want. And when you get it out there, you sort of downloaded it, you feel a bit of success and a bit of relief maybe, you know, that, that long idea that you've had is finally out there for the world to hear and who knows, maybe you've got a stroke of genius in there somewhere that nobody's heard yet. It's possible. Is there nothing better than a, an early morning walk through a park? How nice is this? Not the nicest park in the world, but come on. It's a bit of sunshine. It's what, about 20 degrees? It's beautiful. Yeah, I just kind of wish I wasn't going to work, but you know, I can overlook that for the minute. Therapy. It's almost like a therapy. It's kind of therapeutic. You're out walking and talking and you know, getting your ideas out there. <laughs> kind of, I was gonna say discussing things. Well, it's not a discussion, it's kind of a one-way discussion, but hey, it's out there. And it feels cathartic. It feels like a therapy. It's a relief, it's a stress relief. It's, 
I don't know. It's, it's a great thing. It is a, definitely a form of therapy. You know, it's good. For, uh, it's good for the mind. It's good for mental health. Everybody should have an outlet for things on their mind. Just put it that way. Uh, you don't have to necessarily see a therapist. You know, I mean, I know that's popular in America and what have you, and it's getting more popular here too. And you know, nothing wrong with it. Um, not everybody has the option for other other ways of of doing it. So. Yeah, in that case, therapy is good for them, but in some cases, there are other forms of therapy. They can be riding, they can be keeping fit, they can be doing a YouTube, they can be running, you know? Running can be a form of therapy, definitely. You get a, you get a bit of excitement from it, the endorphins are released, and things feel good again. Oh yeah, on the whole therapy thing. I have this funny thought. <laughs> uh, is this going to make any sense? Probably not. Oh God, no one's gonna get this. I think about that crazy scene in Crocodile Dundee. I know, what? Yes, I know, Crocodile Dundee. Where Sue, I think it is, is talking to him about, you know, therapy and what my therapist and whatever. And he says, hasn't he got any mates? And she says, she says what do you mean, hasn't he got any mates? And she, you know, she says, no, just see a therapy because it helps to talk. Crocodile Dundee says, well, back at Walkabout Creek, you know, you, you've got a problem. You tell Wally. Wally tells so-and-so. He tells somebody else. He tells somebody else. The next thing, the whole town knows about it. And there you go. No more problem. It's kind of like YouTube, hey? Tell your problems to the rest of the world. Suddenly you haven't got any more problems. That's one way of looking at it. Next we have fun and excitement. Making videos is fun. It's exciting. Why is it fun? Well, it's fun to make. It's a project. It's something new. It's creative. It's a kind of an art, you know, however you look at it. I mean, I'm loving the process, just making them and the excitement of knowing what all these chopped up bits of film are going to look like when you edit them together into something or other. Just maybe people out there are going to love it. There's this anticipation this excitement that, you know, oh, what if this next one is really hits home with people? What if they love it? What if it's like, just hits the mark and everybody resonates with it? I've had a couple of tasters of that. And believe me, it's exciting. When something goes a little bit right and you get something, uh, you know, close to, close to good or something you're happy with and other people resonate with it, make nice remarks, make nice comments say good things or just get a lot of views and likes and stuff like that it's yeah it's a little bit egotistical i suppose no doubt about it but it's truly exciting and i've heard other youtubers saying there's new people who are starting out you know getting thrilled by getting a number of views and, and what have you and it's absolutely true it is super exciting the the anticipation of waiting to see what happens i do recommend it i recommend it because it's it's a buzz it's fun Okay, that's enough of that. You got dog walkers, you got squirrels, you got summer sunshine. The only thing I will say, I'd give anything to live somewhere where the climate was pretty much like this for, what, I could do with six months of the year like this, 20 degrees in the morning, maybe 25 up to 30 degrees in the day, back down again. That's where I'd want to live. I want to live in shorts and t-shirt. Check this. When you make these videos, you might be doing someone a favor. One person somewhere might get something out of it. Who knows, this grass is wet. Somebody somewhere might get, take one little snippet of information from what you've said, or take something as a bit of inspiration and say, yep, I've been wanting to do that for years, or I've been trying to get around to this thing for years, or that's the thing I've been looking for, or that's what I've been trying to say, you know, and you might just be the one that gives them that last little push, but you know, tips them in the right direction. You might just have a little gem of information to pass on to someone who's been looking for it in all this time. There you go, that's a good one. In my case, what am I gonna say here? 50 something year old bloke, trying something new for the hell of it, why not? And you know what? I'm gonna make a video about why this is not 
a midlife crisis. It ain't. And I'll explain that in another one at some point. If you want to hear about that, let me know. And the last thing I can think of right now is, on the whole, whatever you do, hopefully you'll be generally contributing to a sense of positivity to the world. At least you should be. That's the idea. Some sort of positivity out there is going to spread and spread slowly, bit by bit, if we all think and work like that, creating positive, positive vibes and a good feeling. That'll spread and in general, everybody will be a lot happier and we'll stop the wars. <laughs> maybe, maybe a bit drastic, but you know, good things can come. And that score, my advice would be keep the positivity flowing and it will get out there. It will have a knock-on effect and that's what you want. So that's it. That's what I think about the advantages of YouTube. Just off the top of my head, just a very few quick basic ideas and why it's a good thing, uh, how it can only be positive for you and people around you. There you go. Game over. Thank you very much. Now I'm off to work. But that's okay. That's okay. I need to learn how to do endings. Last crack at an ending. I hope that was useful in some shape or form. Basically, I was trying to talk about the advantages and the positives that come along with making a YouTube channel. Why it's good, it's good for the mind, it's good for others, it's good for you. And it's also good fun. And I hope it gets somewhere. Hope you get something from it. And I'll see you on the next one sometime. Somewhere, you know where. Right here. <laughs>